According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than one-third, or 78.6 million, U.S. adults are obese. Obesity-related conditions include heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer, some of the leading causes of preventable death. The estimated annual medical cost of obesity in the U.S. was $147 billion in 2008. The medical costs for people who are obese were $1,429 higher than those of normal weight. My name is Roger Sampson. I am 45 years old and between October 2012 and August of 2013 I lost 100 pounds. It was quite an accomplishment for me because I spent more than 30 years of my life battling weight, being overweight since the age of 10. And I tried so many diets over the years, tried and failed and to the point where I became apathetic about being overweight and I actually for a time used it in my life um, tried to take advantage of it if it were as an actor and um, then the thing is about it is I realized when I lost the weight that I had gone through something that a lot of people go through. A lot of people go through the same stresses that I went through, the same life experiences that I went through, and suffer from the same you know, weight issues that I went through. And the fact that I was able to come through it and be in a place that I never thought as an adult that I could be, because I, I had literally been 25 years of my adult life not having this experience, that I realized it's something that needs to be talked about. It's something that we need to bring out in the open. We need to bring to light and we need to show people that, you know, you can beat this. Um, it can be done. It, you know, it, life is hard and it always will be hard. There's nothing you can do to change that. But you can make decisions for yourself and you can choose to be healthy. You can choose to, to not let the stresses of life beat you. When I first started working, I was working in a very busy HMO practice. I don't know if you guys know about HMO practices, but in an HMO environment, you see a lot of patients and they're scheduled, you know, one after another. And you're trying to see as many people as you can in a relatively short period of time. And the one thing that every patient who came in had in common was that the weight was contributing to their disease and it was making it difficult to control their disease. So yeah. I mean, I see the same person again for yet an even higher blood pressure. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, we just went up on your medication last visit. I guess we've got to go up on it again. You know, there's got to be a better way. And indeed, I mean, we've always known there is a better way. And, you know, even in medical school way back when, they, you know, the, the professors would recommend, you know, first and foremost, encourage your patients to eat right and to diet and exercise and to try and control these medical problems, what we call the metabolic disease process. The problem is, although we all know it, it's very difficult to do. And it's difficult to convince patients that it's something that they can do or that they would want to do and that it's sustainable. To better understand this issue, let's start at the beginning. What does it mean to be overweight? The CDC defines overweight as a condition in which one's body mass index, or BMI, ranges from 25 to 29.9. Obesity is defined as a BMI of 30 or greater. These conditions are the result of an energy imbalance resulting from consuming more calories than the body needs. There are many reasons why this imbalance exists in any given individual. Causes include environment, genetics, behavior, disease, and others. Uh, my story is one that journeys a long journey of some painful experiences though. And when I was 17, I had a car accident. And prior to that, I had been active in high school. I was a twirler. I was very much into sports. And then my car accident caused me a severe brain trauma. And I had a coma. I had water on the brain, broke my leg, my arm, just all kinds of multiple injuries, which has caused 
a huge setback in what I was then into what I was then at the point that I was out of the hospital bed. And at that point I gained weight. And it was unavoidable, you know, it was just part of the process, but it was difficult for me. And I got married shortly after, very young, at 19. And gained that, you know, they say you're going to pack on that freshman 15, or I really think it's that 31st year newly married. And so I packed on more weight. I think the first time that I decided I was going to lose weight, I had always been very athletic my whole life. Always star team. We were very successful every team I ever played on. So I was always very thin, always very healthy. When I decided to take the route of music in college, I stopped being athletic. I stopped playing sports because all of my attention was focused on studies. And that really affected my weight. I did not change the way that I ate. And as you know, when you're younger, you don't really have to worry about that. But when you get older and you really stop being um, athletic and you stop using so much energy, you're studying all the time, being sedentary, that can really have an effect on your body. So I started gaining weight. I also found out that I had a thyroid problem when I was in high school. So I think the two of those things together um, really affected my weight. I skyrocketed, of course I'm six foot one, but I skyrocketed to over 200 pounds. And I had never been heavy my whole life. So that was really hard for me to handle in many ways. Uh, for me, as far as uh, weight issues, they really started when I was around 10 years old. Um, my family started to split up. And the only thing that I could do that was not controlled or uh, monitored was music and food. I could get either of those things uh, without anybody controlling me. And food was a comfort for me very, very easily. I could go to the refrigerator or the pantry and pretty much eat anything I wanted to to comfort myself. And at 10, um, unfortunately, it went unchecked. And, and by the time I was 15, 14 and 15 years old, I was already obese. Uh, that word was never used. I was just a fat boy. Weight issues stretch beyond the borders of the plate. Denial and apathy lead to self-deception and acceptance. These issues distort self-perception and are just as dangerous as the weight itself. It affected everything from relationships to just uh, personal development, everything. Uh, for me, I grew into my music with it, but um, artistically and personally, those things grew apart while the health things continued to grow. And you know, you're in your 20s, so you're resilient, and you think, ah, oh, it'll go away, and it never really did. I would lose weight on small parts at a time, and it would come back immediately because I would do fad diets and things that didn't necessarily work well or stay away because I wasn't doing those in a healthy fashion. Um, and psychologically, they probably weren't very healthy for me either. <clears throat> so finally I started studying with this acting coach, and he encouraged me to go with what works for me. And, you know, um, so I started really pressing being more of the uh, of the funny guy, you know, the funny guy in the group who's always, you know, there's like the romantic guy, and then there's the funny guy. He's always just there to kind of make you laugh, and he never is serious, you know, about anything, and so on and so forth. And nothing really bad happens to him. And it's okay that he's fat because... You know, it's funny. And so that's kind of what I went with. And it, I ended up uh, doing well with that. And I was so I, I was completely okay with being fat. As a matter of fact, you sort of have to be if you're a fat guy and an actor because that's you, the only reason that you're working is to make people laugh at the fact that you're fat. And that's, you know, that so that's kind of a that's kind of a career thing you have to be okay with if you're a fat guy and a, as an actor. And so I did. I, I went, I just, I sort of committed to it. As a matter of fact, I didn't diet because I, you know, there's this mantra if you, if you're, if that's what you're selling is, is this happy fat guy, then you have to commit to it and you have to be, you know, okay with it. And I was healthy at the time, you know, I, it was, by this time I'm 34, 35, and uh, I had moved to Los Angeles. Um, and uh, it was interesting when I put together my reel and all that, and I sent it out to agents and managers in Los Angeles, and I, my, on my first try, I got an agent and a, and a manager, and that is an experience all in itself.
Humans are designed to need food, and we love to eat. But the problem lies in the choices of what kind of food and how much of it we eat. For whatever the reasons, more and more often we choose high calorie, high fat foods, which are generally cheaper and more readily available, and taste good. This dynamic only increases the challenge to fight the war of portion control and healthy eating options. We must learn to make a better choice because choices have consequences. I had two friends die within five weeks, and uh, I knew that if I didn't change something that I was going to die too, and mo both of my friends were overweight. Uh, one died suddenly, and the other one died of cancer, and uh, I just knew that it, that it was, I had to do something now, and I couldn't wait any longer. My mobility was impaired. Um, uh, I wasn't I'm not sleeping good at night. Uh, clothes were awful. Couldn't find anything that fit ever, and um, um, just not being able. And really tired all the time. Just tired, and tired all the time. It's probably the biggest struggles that I have. And I think for myself. Uh it was physical, a lot of it. And I, like I said, I tried to lose weight in the past. It affected me sleep-wise. I ended up with sleep apnea, which I believe was uh, caused by the overweight. Uh, later, I was uh, diagnosed with atrial fib, my heart going into irregular rhythm, which was caused by the sleep apnea. And uh, I felt joint discomfort and, and pain. I didn't have the mobility. You know, all the things that go with the, with the weight. Fatigue was a big problem of mine. Now, having a thyroid problem, some of that was associated with the thyroid problem. And then also, thyroid can make you tired, and then you're sedentary, and so then you get tired, um, and you gain weight. Um, it is a side effect of having hypothyroidism. So I think that was part of it. But, you know, when you're not healthy, and you're not eating right, and you're busy all the time, and in college, you're not getting enough sleep. Plus, I lived in the dorm. So I was, you know, we were up all hours of the night. And I think I really just, I didn't want to be tired anymore. That was the, for me, that was the biggest thing. I just wanted to feel like a vibrant person again that got up in the morning and I wasn't tired. And that wasn't happening. I was, even in my 20s, I was so exhausted. When I had my daughter, same thing. I just, I was running one day and I could barely breathe. I was just panting for air at 25 years old that's just not normal you shouldn't have to live like that so um, self-esteem obviously is affected um, my husband was always very supportive but you know you want to feel good about yourself and I just didn't I did not feel good about myself so I think probably those two things more than anything else um, and it wasn't until I got into my 40s late 30s and 40s that the real health issues started to become apparent and they got worse and worse and worse as time went on. Uh, while we addressed the problems with medication, uh, the real issue was what I was eating, how I was eating, and how I was taking care of myself. By my mid-40s, I was in danger zone, uh, on the verge of, uh, my doctor even said, a stroke waiting to happen, a heart attack waiting to happen. Um, being in my mid-40s and being a male, I was a candidate for heart disease, stroke, heart attack. Um, I was weighing in at 300 pounds. Um, I'm 5'8", so you can imagine how that looked, and I can just tell you how it felt. It wasn't very good. Uh, my self-confidence, e even being an artist and a musician, on those levels, my confidence was great, but it could have been greater had I not carried around an extra person. Um, my blood pressure was in the upper 180s, 190s. Um, everything was bad. I had become type 2 diabetic. Uh, it's very common, obviously, with that type of weight issue. Um, psychologically, it was terrible. I was so depressed um, and tried to convince myself I wasn't depressed, but I was depressed. After several trips to the doctor um, and getting lab results back that were uh, downward spiraling, um, liver enzymes that were elevated that were pointing at fatty liver disease and my blood pressure was 
uh, even with medication, it was getting worse with each each time we uh, each time we tested it. And I ended up going on bigger, you know, more and more potent meds. At, for a while, I just thought she was just, you know, trying to bilk me or whatever. But um, I couldn't ignore the fact that every time I took my liver enzymes, they were the number was getting worse and worse and worse. And when I looked up fatty liver disease and saw that. You know, uh, there's no treatment other than reversal by changing your lifestyle or by liver transplant, and I uh, didn't want to have to deal with that. Not to mention, you know, obesity is, you know, a leading cause of, you know, heart disease. And so, unfortunately, it was it was a matter kind of where I was looking at long-term health problems, you know, an early death, you know, and I I <laughs> I have a lot I want to accomplish in my life, and so I I I. I uh, ended up having to be sort of scared straight, if you will. For me, it was being able to play with my grandchildren. I noticed I didn't have the energy level that I really wanted to try to keep up with a five-year-old and a two-year-old. And it was exhausting. And I think now that I've lost some of the weight, I find a huge difference in my ability to play with them. And the most important, significant objective at this point is achieving perfection in your health. Let's focus on that. Let's get the health taken care of. Let's get rid of this extra inflammatory tissue and then go back and eat it the way that you're going you're to normally eat. This is what I was going to say. Um, we all know how to gain weight. Food is so readily available. It's so good. It's so cheap, right? But not many people know how to lose it just as easily as they can gain it. And, and I've always felt that, you know, we've got to be able to lose weight just as easily as we can gain it or we're always going to be fighting an uphill battle. There are over 500 different diet and weight loss plans. There are surgical and non-surgical options, each with their own pros and cons. Each individual should research and consult with their physician to find what's right for them. I had a gastric bypass done because I wanted to lose weight and I couldn't lose weight on my own. I had an eating disorder that made me constantly hungry, never full, and no matter what I did, eating right, exercising. I even tried uh, weight loss pills. They didn't work either. So I decided to have a gastric bypass done. When I first started, which was a year ago, I was 294. Then I had to go through some classes, which teaches you how to change your eating habits, cut out the junk food, the sodas and stuff. And my surgery date was February 6, 2010. And the day of my surgery, I was two, two nine, uh, 274, and now I'm 170. I'm also eight months pregnant. The baby's healthy. Uh, without the surgery, I wouldn't be able to get pregnant because I've tried before. Usually when you're overweight, it's less likely for you to get pregnant. So because I lost so much weight, I've lost like 104 pounds, uh, I was able to get pregnant. So I chose the diet by Gwen Shamblin called Way Down. And this particular diet, basically the premise behind it is you can eat anything you want. You can eat a portion of meat, and you can eat a portion of your brownie, and you can eat a portion of your green beans, but if you don't want, if you're getting full or you're getting to that place where you're satisfied, then eat your brownie. Take a bite of it. Take a bite or two. And I followed that diet for seven months, and I know they say don't weigh yourself every day, but I did every single day, and never once did I not at least lose ounces. Within the last six months, I've now dropped over 70 pounds, and I did that all simply by gaining control of what I was eating. Uh, what I was putting into my body, the fuel that I was putting in had to change, because if I wanted to stay here, and I realized that I did want to stay here, not only for my my family and my relationships and my friends who mean so much to me now um, that I use those wonderful relationships to fuel my artist my artistry and my you know my passions uh, but now uh, I just started off by walking simply walking and you can do this anybody can do this it's free <laughs> there's a sidewalk outside your door I'm sure there is pick your least favorite television show I tell this to everybody uh, pick your least favorite television show turn it off walk outside your door and walk 15 minutes one way and turn around and walk back and you've got 30 minutes of exercise done that you didn't do the day before and do that every day and if you can't do it every day don't beat yourself up
do it the next day. And within a week, you'll say, huh, I've exercised four or five hours today. And then it'll become a habit. And then you'll make your, yourself do it. You'll be like, wait a minute, I didn't walk today. I don't feel so good. I didn't walk. It's called the five bite diet. And the premise of it is basically uh, to misdirect your mind, to make your mind think that you aren't hungry so you won't eat um, or won't feel like eating. Which is one of the main issues with weight loss with dieting is you know how hungry people get and how difficult it is to manage hunger, <clears throat> and so that's what his his diet basically does is that it it keeps you from getting hungry, it, it, but it it's done by training your body to think that you know you can survive on next to nothing, which is true. No breakfast. Have five bites of food for lunch. Have five bites of food for dinner. Maybe a few modifications here and there depending upon the person. Try not to snack, period, not until we're done. And then drink anything that you want to drink as long as we keep the amount of carbon in it down as much as possible. So I, I ask for no calorie drinks, diet drinks are okay. Still, there's some carbon, obviously, as it gives it its color and its flavor, although it might not be enough to be measured as a calorie, it's still there. So eh, try and curtail a little bit. But all the water you want, and then all the coffee you want. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of carbon in coffee too. But in coffee, you get a lot of caffeine, and that caffeine helps to, you know, stimulate your your stimulate your metabolism a little bit. But it suppresses your appetite. It's actually a really, really good way to suppress your appetite. So that makes it even easier to stick to the diet. So, and there are other benefits with with coffee as far as you know anti tumorigenic effects and whatnot. So I'm a big coffee fan, and then water, and then just stick to the diet. Have five bites of anything you want. That's what's so great. There's no limitations whatsoever. You can eat absolutely anything you can dream up. Just stop at five, and you think about it. Once you've had it, you've had it. And the one thing that I've always known is that it's about portion control. If we can keep portions roughly the same size, whatever that size is, if we can keep the amount coming in to roughly the same size, meal in, meal out, after a few days, three days is the, the magic number, that amount of food completely fills you up. It's resetting something we call the hunger stat. And once we've reset that hunger stat, you're on the road to victory. And so my big objective has been to try and find a way of losing weight that is doable and sustainable. I mean, that's what it's all about. And I think that's why we hear so much of it today in the news is that while there are a lot of different diets out there and a lot of different plans and, and every, you know, everyone has its merits, the problem is they're just not sustainable. And it's because of that reason that we're always looking for the next diet, the next one that's going to be the, you know, the magic bullet. Truly, the only, unfortunately, the only successful, sustainable diet so far has been a gastric bypass. Using a gastric bypass or a lap band to achieve weight loss, I think, is a reasonable idea in some patients. Um, I, you know, I try and discourage it. I feel like we, we really need to do this medically. On the other hand, and the, my one little caveat, for some of my patients, they, they just haven't been able to get started on the 5 by diet for whatever reason. So they've had a gastric bypass, they've had a lap band. So use the surgery as a tool, if you will, to get you over the hump, to set your hunger set. Because when you first start eating after you've had a gastric bypass, you're eating you know, three bites per meal, less than even what I'm recommending for my patients. So use it then to set your hunger set to a very small volume. But please, just continue along the process. Don't eat to the point of being stuffed at every meal. Instead, just eat till you're full, the three bites, and you know, use your brain and your intelligence to say, look, I'm done, I'm, I've, I've had it. There's no value to stuffing your, your stomach with extra food just because it's sitting there. In the ongoing war with obesity, we must learn to take responsibility for our choices and take control over our bodies and minds. Enjoying food is not the problem. The problem is self-control and portion control. We must also deal with the circumstances in our lives which led to obesity in the first place. Retraining your mind and body is achievable, but takes a lot of hard work. Once we master it, we can live a longer, more fulfilling life enjoying what we love. More and more people win this battle every day. I think it's good to, to hear other people's stories, and I think it's good to take that in and research it and see if that might be the right way for you. But I think you also need to consider the type of person you are. 
I think you need to consider where you're at in your life. Um, the individuals that are giving you advice on how to go about it. Are they older than you? Are they younger than you? Are they more fit than you? Um, do you have ailments that they don't have? Uh, and it's, you know, it's great to get advice, but I just think you need to be careful and consider where you're at versus where other people are at. Um, everything doesn't work for everybody. And I think moderation is a, is a big key. A person needs to find out what is it that they need in their life in that season to be the healthiest they can be. So maybe that's just starting off with 10 minutes of a walk every single day. You know, dropping the Pepsi out of your life and not having the sodas. You know, try that for 30 days. Find out what is it that starts helping you feel the best you possibly can. And then little by little, after the, I think they say you've done something for 14 days, then you can start a habit. Then go into that next habit, add a salad into every meal. Just don't do it so drastic because you think you have to be somewhere all at one time, but find what works for you. Don't let it be stressful. Um, that it doesn't have to be. It can just believe that it can happen. See your goal um, uh, as the you know as the prize, and just step out and do it. And I would, of course, recommend. The, it may not be for everyone, but for us, this is we've tried so many diets, and this has been the yep. easiest thing we've ever experienced. Uh, I would recommend not paying a lot of money for expensive diets, but just eat less and the same amount every day and whatever you want and, and uh, it'll be easier than you could ever imagine. And I agree, uh, not letting it be stressful and finding something that works for you. And I've tried, like she said, many, many diets before and they didn't work for me. This is the easiest thing I've ever done. I'm up to walking anywhere between three and five miles a day and it takes an hour to an hour and a half of my time and I've created that time every day for me because at 70 pounds lighter I can now do things that six months ago I could never think about doing. I feel better, my blood pressure is normal, it's one, 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 105 over 55 was my last reading just last week. My blood sugar is normal. It has been normal now for over three months. Uh, my A1C has dropped into normal ranges. My doctor is very, very happy with me. But even with the doctors aside, I'm happy with me. And I know that this is where I'm supposed to be at this point in my life. And the bigger message here is that you can do it. It is so easy. It just takes doing it, making it a habit, and you will be so happy that you did. The first thing I would say is to never give up hope because I actually did give up hope. I, for a long time actually, I embraced my weight. I used it to, to when I started acting, um, to be that happy fat guy, you know, that Chris Farley, you know, John Goodman guy. And I was quite good at it. And, you know, at the time, you know, you think you're gonna live forever because you don't have any health problems. And it's not really until that sort of thing hits you or hits someone that you care about that makes you realize, you know, really where you are. But when, you know, when I had those health problems, there was a time where I felt a lot of dread because I didn't, I had d died before and I'd, I'd lost 20, 30 pounds and then I'd just see it come back again. And so I, there was a time where I really felt hopeless and then I met Dr. Lewis and it was sort of like, I don't know, I guess you'd call it a divine appointment because he came at the perfect time in my life where I was, where I was ready. I was ready to do it and um, he provided me the tools to do it and I just had to really just see it through and just know that that was what I wanted and um, you know so that would be just to never give up hope and know that there's other people that are just like you and have been where you are and have conquered it and so if I can conquer it anybody can conquer it because I'm a person who hates change. <laughs> yeah I think the one thing that he hit upon is that he was ready to do it and if you're not ready, you won't succeed. And you can't do it for other people. You really have to do it for yourself because I, I can't do it for him because it's not gonna be motivation enough. You know, when it's three o'clock in the morning and you really wanna eat something, it's gotta be your own personal drive and commitment to do it for yourself. 826 patients who are really interested in losing weight. And you have to remember that my patients are general internal medicine patients. They're patients who have you know, high blood pressure or, or diabetes, that's what they're coming to see me for. 
and yet, you know, in working with them over the years, you know, I've encouraged them to lose weight, and 826 have said, you know what, I do want to lose weight. So it's so it's it, so, so that's how I, I've gotten my patients. I'm just they're not being sent to me specifically to lose weight. Um, of these 826 patients, when I go through my my um, all through through all the data here. But it amounts to about 150 pounds have been gained over the last eight years of people in this 826 group, 826 number of patients. Of the remaining in this group of 826 patients, I have 15,161 pounds loss. So about 150 pounds gained, 15,161 pounds lost some unbelievable data but it's it's all real it's, this is this is the reality and this is why i'm so passionate about getting this information out there so i'm so happy that that we're doing this documentary because i think it's so important for people to know and this is not a fantasy this is reality weight gain occurs for many reasons that doesn't mean you give in find what works for you and make a plan surround yourself with supportive people and believe in yourself choose life for, for some people they think that enjoyment in life comes from just sitting back eating eating to to their heart's content throwing caution to the wind forgetting about their medical issues and just going for them life is all about eating my attitude is oh there's so much more to life I mean life is about living and thriving and just feeling healthy you know allowing your internal organs to work the way they're supposed to. I mean, that's what it's all about. Oh, and by the way, I don't miss out on a thing. I eat things that people who are on diets refuse to eat because they can't, or they've been told, ah, oh, it's just it's sort of sad, I feel, you know? But, but there are some people who just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. They don't see that life could be better, that being thinner, they would actually be happier. They would be healthier. They would feel free. They just don't see that. And honestly, for those patients, I can't help them. I try, believe me, I, I you know, hit my head against the wall working with people and trying to convince them of the benefits that they can expect when they lose the weight. And, um, you know, let's face it, we're only on this planet one time. We've got one shot to make the most of this life. So this is the time to do it. And, and don't throw it away by just, you know, going about your routine day, um, without an, without achieving something positive. I just, I feel like, you know, I, I, I'm trying to encourage my patients to live an exceptional life rather than just a mundane, ordinary life. And truly, when we get the excess weight off, we, people start to feel it. They really feel what I've been talking about. And they say, you know, this is the greatest thing I've ever done. I can't put it into words, but I feel amazing. I'm so glad that I've lost this weight. Later.